Hello, thank you for sticking around after the screening. I wanna take a second to thank Topic for sharing the film with us. My name is Dominique O'Neill and I'm a programmer for Palm Springs Short Fest and I'm delighted to welcome the filmmakers of The Letter Room, director Elvira Lind and producer Sophia Sondervan. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having thank us. <laughs> so Elvira, you directed and wrote the screenplay. Could you tell us about how the story came about? Yes, um, the story was sort of roaming around in my head for a really long time um, in different forms. So it, it was it started out as an inspiration from a podcast I'd listened to about um, these men. I, I can't remember the exact podcast, unfortunately, I would have loved to share that. But um, it was about different men that had been in 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 a relationship with a woman uh, writing just letters. So they had been writing letters with this woman, not knowing of each other, uh, all of them thinking that they were in a romantic relationship, um, being the only one. Then finding out that uh, the woman is actually a man, skimming them of money and that there were multiple of them. So they were all very heartbroken and and it was sort of a story about um, being catfished to a certain degree. But then one of them expressed this sadness, not not just about being heartbroken, but also just losing the letters in his life and like this romance. And he said, well, I almost wish that we could have just at least have continued to write letters, just stay in that pretend world because it made it a little less devastating to think of if there were still letters being told and, and or being sent. And, um, and then when I learned about the letter room in prisons and, and how this whole censoring world function. And I imagine working there, then the two things got kind of cobbled. And then Sophia said, why don't you write a screenplay and we'll make a film. And it's like, okay, <laughs> let's try to do that. So Sophia then, was- uh... Then we saw those actual letters. <laughs> and then we saw the letters. And I have a very, uh, yeah, I have a, you know, I, I'm, I question the, the, the prison system here. So I've always found myself, uh, looking at that a lot. And I think this was a way to tell a story also about this system and what, how it's, it's a little inhumane and the way that it treats people and their privacy and how we store people away and uh, disconnect each other so intensely in that way. Um, it's an interesting way to, to talk about that through yeah. these letters and yeah, it was just a different way of telling that story. Yeah. So, um, so, so Sylvia was involved uh, from the beginning, and you you encouraged a screenplay out of Elvira. Out of a very pregnant Elvira. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> she was extremely pregnant. <laughs> Not when we wrote. I was like early pregnant when you said, "Why are you writing?" Oh, yeah, I was yeah. like, "Will we make it? How long will it take?" <laughs> <laughs> it's <exactly. laughs> true. Yeah. Although you wrote it very fast. I, I mean, did you write are it fast. Just... That's the thing. It had been yeah. in there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to um, talk about the character of Richard. Um, I think he's very multifaceted. Um, and I think you balance all of his different characteristics really perfectly and beautifully. Can you just talk about how you um, created his character? Um, yeah, it's an interesting question because I he's just kind of evolved a lot uh, um, with the story also. And, um, I really like the idea of this man who had a lot of um, um, a, a, like a woman's sensibility in some, <laughs> like there was a lot of the things that we usually prescribe uh, women and uh, I wanted him to inhabit that and that kind of being uh, something that he would, would have to hide a little bit in the, the world that he was working in. Um, so that was sort of part of um, the story of the institution that he works in and part of the story of how um, how we have to, to change ourselves in order to fit into a world that 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 probably well I could think that it maybe didn't need to exist in the way that it does. Um, and and then I I wrote it with the actor that ends up doing it, Oscar Isaac, who I also happened to be married to and was pregnant with at the time. So I wrote it with him in mind and he is also a very multifaceted person and uh, and and very important person in my life. So it was 
so inspiring and it's also incredibly funny so I think a lot of the when I would write certain things I always imagine him doing and I would laugh and laugh so much and he really he really understood that but he also understands uh, how much I appreciate subtlety and like not taking it too much in any direction and I don't know he he also ran with it and just created this I mean the character that, that came out of him was just really something else very magical I think um he's yeah. a great actor so that was that was a that was an advantage yeah and they <laughs> she would call me the next day she'd be like we talked about it all last night and we found this photograph and this is Richard and she sent me this picture and it was you know they had found this and, and he found it he was I told him about the character <laughs> told him kind of how I wanted it to be and we were reading the different, I had to write, you know, I was just doing lots of different drafts and I, I'm from documentary. So for me, it's so different. And it was so fun to get to just like conjure up a person and then create that person and put them into this world. And then uh, that was obviously not new for him, but he found a photo, it's all black and white photo um, of, a, of a correctional officer. And it was just, it just became like a visual mantra in a way, it was really, helpful and um yeah yeah he took on the character really it was kind of also an interesting transformation to watch <laughs> and live with <laughs> where did where did he find the photo was he just like on pinterest and <laughs> i don't think it was on pinterest but i think maybe <laughs> like uh, I don't, i'm not actually sure I'll, I'll ask him i don't know if he even remembers <laughs> Pinterest. I want that same shirt. <laughs> yeah, this guy, but it did, the hair was copied from this person. We worked yeah. with an incredible um, hair designer, I would call him, because he transformed this hair. It was in, I mean, the have, getting all that stuff done, it was Oscar's real mustache. I know a lot of people don't yeah. believe that it was, but it really was. And he started with a huge beard. He'd just come off of this space movie where he was like in this big beard and long hair and we just that the day that that changed it was outrageous but he <laughs> he created the waves and the hair so it has that like 70s vibe and then yeah. we also worked with the music a lot i think we we listened to a lot of salsa music and and he would listen to it before he would do a scene and so we, i really wanted to have some like being his inner sounds were the sound of the congas that we always ended up using and like having a little bit of that rhythm in him and he used it a lot it was really yeah it, it worked i think it worked really well to incorporate that yeah i'm glad you talked about that because that's definitely uh, one of my it was gonna be one of my questions so stand out the um the drumming and in, in those moments where where he you know something switches in his brain and and they just start you know taking off the drums um yeah. So, what um, what was it like um, being um, pregnant and working with your husband? It was like a, a family affair on set then? Um, yeah, it was kind of crazy, right? I mean, she, I, I, I I've never, I don't think anyone would do the same thing. You know, she was such a trooper, and she looked good too. Like it was just, you know, she she just showed up ready every day. She had the most energy of anybody. <laughs> you know being what were you like seven months pregnant eight months yeah, pregnant it was really late and, and she was just ready to do this and, I was so and excited, super though. excited you know and um i think she had she made everyone energized we all were happy to be there and it was like this thing where like no one know. can complain because the pregnant lady is still running around <laughs> They're all like, we have to keep going if she's still on her on her two feet but but it was you know it's challenging we we looked at each other i was gonna i was like this could be a terrible mistake you know the hormones <laughs> going crazy and i was you know, there's just a lot going on it's a lot of pressure and a lot of pressure on each other because we you know, it can be nice to have a break and you don't get to. We also had a little kid at home that were, that there was just a lot going on, but we just had such a good time making this together. Yeah. And that's, you know, you'd never know until you try it. And I think the great thing of doing a short, you know, is that you can do a real production like this in five days, mm -hmm. you know? So, so although it's as much work almost as a feature, the shooting time is more limited. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, to say, okay, I'm gonna, this is my week, I'm doing it, you know, it's, yeah. it's much less daunting than, you know, a month or, you know, two months or sometimes whatever, five months. So I think that, you know. But it was, we went, we scouted, uh, because we, I was very set on shooting in an active prison. I really, yeah. 
I think coming from a world documentary, I also wanted there to be um, an element of that to exist in there. And you just can't recreate like what a traumatic place that is. And I wanted it to be parts of that in there too. Um, but it, I think the more difficult thing was actually going to these places and scouting them and where people were living. And we would, you know, so we would go also go and take a look at, there were certain things where, where jails where people hadn't been convicted yet or were waiting. And we did, we, it could be, you know, anyone from like a traffic ticket or a murder that, you know, you just don't know. And I was like pregnant and it is a very, that was the first time and I had been pregnant before, but it was the first time I really felt uh, very vulnerable it was yeah. a very weird thing because you can't really hide that you're pre like it's like this thing that is that arrives in the room before you and um, so it felt like I was giving a lot of information <laughs> about myself <laughs> in a strange way and and it was also I don't know it was that that was actually the more tricky part yeah, yeah I think there's a real mentality of fear in these in these jails you know where the guards really want everyone to feel afraid. So even with us, you know, they said, look at this floor. And we would look at the floor, you know, it's a floor. And the guard would say, well, that floor is made out of marble and it's gonna break your head open. I have never looked at a floor and thought that floor is gonna break my head. You know, it's, it doesn't even, right? So there's a real kind of fear instilled in you from the moment you kind of enter. Um, and I think I can understand, especially from Elvira's point of view, if you're already feeling, you know. No, it was not that I, I didn't actually feel scared as much as I was just, it, it's just a weird thing that, um, I don't know if that's a weird thing, but being pregnant and having that be um, shared without you telling someone that I'm expecting yeah. a baby, like when you can see that, it's almost like you feel like you have to then say something, oh, you're having a baby, but then sharing that with, a lot of people that are also, you know, people are going through incredibly traumatic things in there and and some people might not be well, you know, so it was, um, it felt a little bit, yeah, it wasn't intense and in, that was like the more intense part because then when we were shooting, obviously there was so much control and everything was so organized and, and it was really interesting and also really powerful to, to spend time with these people that work there and actually going into these letter rooms, understanding the process of how this works and this um, kind of destruction of privacy and intimacy that, um, that you learn about certainly. Um, it, 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 was, it, it was quite astonishing to me how, um, yeah, people that live in these places that they really are robbed off of this part of their, that should be a human right, I think, to have private letters. I understand, of course, why it can seem necessary, but it also felt, and it even, I think, for the people work that it was like the worst place to work almost. It was like you sit there and it's very, you're in your own kind of solitude, in your own kind of cell, just going through people's stuff. And there's also a lot of sadness with that because there's a lot of kids that write or uh, paint drawings for their parents um and miss them and then they have to they have to throw a lot of the joints out because they're not allowed to use different colors there was those things it was just like yeah. things where you can't even start to comprehend the rule so many rules and yeah family photographs you know if there was a kid mm -hmm. flashing a gang sign somewhere in the yeah, photograph right. the photograph gets someone was out. wearing a bandana you know like yeah. things that you know someone's waiting desperately to receive something that they can hang on a wall to be reminded of their family or you yeah. know yeah yeah stuff and then the, the people that worked there was also, you know, there, was, there was so many different types of people, obviously, yeah. that, as you could imagine, that worked there. But um, we especially met one that really also inspired uh, the writing and also really confirmed this feeling of like, there are people in there that, that work there that really think they're doing a, something good and believe um, in non-violent approach to everyone and that mm -hmm. some people become better people because they are in prison and then it creates safe a safe frame for them or a safe what do you say in English like safe, safe space safe space yeah um mm -hmm. uh, provides a home for people that that don't feel like they have anywhere to go so it was that also really echoed in me it's like is that in society that this that that we, we see prison as like a safe place then 
for these people that that's kind of the only safe place there maybe is and that that was very very hard to to hear um and but also interesting that this person really thought he was doing he was doing something that was helping people where yeah. and it, you know i'm sure that he made that place a much safer place to be with his approach and like his yeah his um I, I would say that one of the more blatant critiques in the film of the prison system is um, the character of Rosita, who who says to Richard that you know he she questions why he's he's working there. Um, can you talk a little bit about her character? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think she's voicing a lot of the things that that I would sort of initially feel. I. I um, I just don't, in the same way that you just don't understand uh, why you, you can, how you can compartmentalize this thing. And I think not just for someone that works there, but having, being part of a, a system here where, um, where it's okay that, that people are being killed uh, be, because of something that they have done. So it's like, what's, work? I, and we, we've killed people, people have been killed for, for so long and, and some uh, people that were actually turned out that they were perhaps innocent. And and this doesn't make any sense. So I feel like she's in the way of voice of reason or just talks mm -hmm. to the conscience and also puts a mirror to this guy who thinks he's doing something good. And it's more about his own feeling um, of doing the good, the right thing and challenging that and how this whole idea of right and wrong and guilty or not guilty or who's being punished. Uh, and we think like we put them in here, then we punish these people, they've been bad. But a lot of other people get punished too. You know, you punish all the children of uh, the people that get put away because they don't get to see their parents or the one, the lovers yeah. or the, the, the friends or, you know. Moms and the dads. The moms and the dads, it's, it's a lot more vast, you know? So I just kind of felt like the surprise element of her also not being sure if she's doing the right thing. Maybe, I mean, I'm not, you know, that's for people to, to, to feel in their own hearts, what do they think is the right or wrong thing to do? But it's very complicated, you know, that's kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, and uh, I'd like to also ask um, one of the other characters, you have, um, I think his name is Jackson, who was waiting for a letter um, played by uh, John uh, Douglas Thompson. Um, and he sort of has sort of like the, the last laugh in that in the film. Can you talk a little bit about um, that subplot a little bit? Yeah. Um, and I actually worked a lot with John on this. He's um, an incredible actor and an incredible human and he, um had a lot of ideas a lot of thoughts about the characters we spent some time working on this character and that was a really important thing for him that it he didn't want to um he didn't want uh jackson to be um stupid like not to he wanted he wanted it to be very clear that that he knew what was going on mm -hmm. um and and i think that is that is really important that it's like yeah, he can laugh. He laughs at at Richard for for uh, for trying to do good. And there's also something, you know, what it's nice to get a letter. And it's also something that we learned that you also talked a lot about this whole like, the um, and it provides authority or not authority, but um, it gives you a more powerful position or it it brings more respect if you're someone that has good connections with the outside. Never receiving a letter mm -hmm. is not it, it. It's very painful. It also um looks bad on uh, as uh, on you um so there's like there was different elements of that and it was like yeah you're trying to help me i appreciate it it's cute you know but you also mm -hmm. you know it's like he just shakes his head at him and 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 i think we should walk away thinking that he's he's still he's he still thinks he's doing something good and it's funny because it's i mean for me that's the humor of that of this what we what we tell ourselves sometimes is just can be a little bit ridiculous, but doing the right thing is very important. Um, 
I think the thing you, that, that you also really nailed that, that we didn't even really know until we saw it was how much they all look down on the person who works in the letter room. Remember, yeah. they didn't want to show us the letter. Like they would pretend mm. like, we don't know who deals with, you know, yeah. the guards were like, we are the guards. And like, they didn't really care so much about the person in the letter room. Um, whereas yeah. that's what we wanted to see, you know, see and, and meet. So I think, you, you know, Richard being so proud of his job in the letter room um i think you've told that story well yeah but i yeah and i also feel like they were they're the ones that have the best connection there richard has a really hard time connecting with the other correction officers so mm -hmm. so i wanted that to be clear and they connect over something like you can connect over literature and they could have been friends outside or they um it's also one of these unlikely places that both very lonely you know and mm -hmm. um they mean none of them really fit in there, you know. And and I like that connection. I, I their relationship is the one that I like the most in this that whole story. Yeah. Well, I could talk about this short all day. I'm sure you can too. <laughs> um, but we'll leave it there. Um, congratulations yeah. on this so beautiful much. film. Yeah. Congratulations on on being shortlisted for the Academy Awards. Um, thank you to all the viewers watching. And the letter room will be available on Topic, a new streaming service on March 11th. For more information, go to topic.com. Thanks. Thanks so Thank much, Dory. <laughs>